ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the very first episode of the Recyclist Podcast, where the environment is our industry. For our very first episode, we are recording right here in sunny uh, Florida, so we figured that our very first guest would have to be a Floridian. He is the executive director of mm -hmm. Keeper yes. of Our Beautiful, is that correct? Correct, yes. Well, welcome to the show for our very first episode, Mr. Brian Bobbitt. Great. Well, thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. No worries, man. No more. How are you doing today? Doing great. Doing great. We've uh, had a, a couple of very good meetings this morning and uh, we're starting to ramp up for our busy season on the beach and uh, we have a beautiful day finally. So uh, it's, it's a good day. How about you? <laughs> I, you know, no complaints. Also uh, sitting down here in Florida, the uh, the weather does tend to uh, to change up at a moment's notice though. So I'm Still kind of getting used to that, but uh, for for those who might not be aware, somehow, uh, what is Keep Brevard Beautiful? What are you guys all about? Well, Keep Brevard Beautiful is a nonprofit that was started in 1981. Uh, we are actually part of a larger affiliate network of Keep America Beautiful, and then as well as Keep Florida Beautiful. Uh, Keep Florida Beautiful has roughly 55 different affiliates throughout the state of Florida, and we are happy to be one of them. Um, as a nonprofit, we do a lot of community events, uh, mostly cleanup and litter control. Uh, we have close to 3,000 active volunteers that work with us on a regular basis. And we also do a, a lot of other uh, environmental educational stuff as well. So um, there, there's quite a bit that we do and it, it, we can get into a little bit more. But just as an overview, we, uh, we're a volunteer based uh, organization. Nice. And when did Keep Brevard Beautiful stand up specifically? Uh, in 1981. 1981. And in the past 41 years now, mm -hmm. uh, what are some of the big things that you guys have been able to accomplish here in Brevard County, Florida? Well, uh, one of our, our best known things is we have a crew that goes out and cleans uh, Cocoa Beach on a daily basis. Uh, so that's where a lot of people really know us from. The other is our volunteer based events. Um, over the 41 years that we've been in existence, we've obviously built up a pipeline of, of coming uh, regular volunteers um, but some of our community events like trash bash uh, coastal cleanup and our flagship event the summer series um, you know these events can bring anywhere between two to three thousand volunteers and in one day we've gotten up to the point where we've removed up to 28 tons of litter in one day in Brevard County 28 tons yes Not county pounds, water. tons yes tons um, you know, we have uh, a lot of the municipalities that get involved with our cleanups and they'll help host sites. They'll recruit volunteers. We make a little bit of a competition and we actually have a, a trash bash coming up on August 9th. So if anyone's interested in joining us, they can go on our website, get more information, or they can download our app on uh, iOS or Android. And there's a calendar of events. If you see something you're interested in doing, you just hit RSVP and you're good to go. So for the trash bash, is that just volunteers get together and they just do beautification and cleanup uh, across the county? Yes. Um, for the past couple of years, it's been hurting a little bit because of COVID, just like everything else. Um, but before COVID, uh, and even now, this is we're kind of doing it back to normal this year. Thank goodness. Uh, what we do is we get the municipalities involved. And so the municipalities will recruit volunteers organized sites in the in that city that really need some attention as far as litter and we actually make it a competition so whatever city recruits the most volunteers will get five hundred dollars to donate to a nonprofit of their choice so if it's a church or a police athletic league or something like that it's free to them to use it if they recruit the most volunteers and then likewise for uh, municipalities that collect the most garbage and tonnage uh, they get five hundred dollars to donate to a nonprofit of their choice uh, I know there's been a really heavy competition between the city of Melbourne and the city of uh, Coco for, for many years. But uh, right before the pandemic, Palm Bay came in out of nowhere and, and took the title. So it's cool to see the municipalities getting uh, competitive with it and good fun and for a good cause. The volunteers love it. Uh, a lot of the cities host after parties with, with food. Uh, you can get shirts from the event. I know there's people that wear shirts all over the place from, from past events. Um, but it's a, it's a fun day. It's a good cause. And we help really beautify our community with some sweat equity. So it's a good thing. Nice. And I know you just kind of brought up the pandemic there for a second. Uh, 
kind of coming out of, of the woods here, uh, the pandemic, uh, how much did the pandemic kind of affect you guys? And are you guys uh, like moving forward? Uh, has that, has this changed anything in terms of your operations? Yes. Um, you know, when the pandemic first happened, obviously, you know, our office shut down, employees started working from home. Uh, we tried our best to keep events virtual. So using our app, you know, if someone wanted to go do a cleanup, they could still go out and do it by themselves or with a small group like their family where there was social distancing and outdoors. Um, and then they could just record their stats on the app and turn it in. So that way they got credit for it because we also do volunteer awards throughout the year. Um, but, you know, we have a, a diehard group of volunteers that believe in what our mission and, and the environment. Uh, so we had a few set, uh, set steady people going out. But obviously, we did see a, a serious decline in, in our involvement with the community for a couple of years. I'm happy to say it's coming back. Uh, staff has been really busy in the past couple of weeks. We've got Trash Bash coming up. We're doing a cleanup at Manti Hammock Campground coming up here soon. Um, we've got Summer Series will be ramping up in June. Uh, and then we've got the Beach and Boards Festival coming up. And all those are volunteer opportunities. Uh, and then we also have a really cool thing. Uh, I guess I can let the secret out. Um, at Beach and Boards in March, we are going to be uh, debuting a remote controlled robot uh, that will be used to collect microplastics out of the sand on the beach. And it's the first of its kind in the country. Oh, that's cool. Yes, I'm very that's excited. Cool. I'm surprised they're letting me play with it, honestly. But um, it, it's going to be really neat. Um, it's going to be an education tool and also a PR thing, but it, it's functional. And we're going to use it to, to collect the, the microplastics that are in the sand. Um, being sure not to disturb the ecosystem with the sargasm or sea turtles or anything like that. But then we're going to get a clear tube and put all the stuff that it collects into a tube so kids and, and other people can actually see the, the amount of microplastics that you're just walking on every day in the sand. And that makes its way into the water and everything else. So uh, we're really excited to have that debut coming out here soon. That seems like a fairly expensive toy, a fairly elaborate thing to just help with microplastics. Are microplastics that big of a deal on the beaches here in Florida? Absolutely. Uh, microplastics are one of the biggest issues that we're facing nowadays, uh, not only just on the beach, but in all of our waterways. You know, you, set, you, you see all that ground litter near a, a shoreline. That's where we really want to focus on cleaning up because that ground litter could get mowed over, turned into smaller pieces, make its way into the lagoon. And then it becomes part of the actual environment because it'll end up in fish, fish end up in birds, uh, and then vice versa, fish end up in humans. And then people actually end up with microplastics inside of them. So it's a huge issue, not just here in Brevard, but worldwide. And uh, it's a big focus. So having the robot out there to make uh, awareness of this will be a major educational tool. Nice. And hopefully that can expand into, you know, more technologies, maybe even more robots. Uh, this is essentially just going to be a trial run of hopefully much bigger and better things in terms of cleaning up the beaches here in Florida, correct? Absolutely. And uh, the uh, robot was provided to keep Florida beautiful by the Surf Evolution Foundation. Um, and they, they purchased it, paid for it, donated it to keep Florida beautiful. And uh, keep Florida beautiful has been kind enough, uh, enough to uh, let us play with it first. And uh, we're making a big debut out there at the Beach and Board Surf Festival, but there's going to be a lot of environmentally minded people. So it'll be good. And you said that specifically is going to be what day? Uh, it's going to be between March 9th and, or excuse me, March 10th through the 13th at uh, Shepherd well, Park in Cocoa Beach. There you go. If you're in Shepherd Park, you're in Cocoa Beach that time, go check out the, the robot that they have uh, running around the sand. Absolutely. Um, I know we, we've talked a lot about the, the different volunteer things you guys have coming up uh, soon, but I also wanted to touch on some of the other uh, programs you have in which individuals themselves can can become active in terms of uh, adopting an area and tree planting and stuff like that. Can you go into uh, a little bit more specifics about some of those other programs you guys have? Absolutely. So for a lot of our volunteers, you know, they come out and they do our community events, the public ones, but they want to do more on a regular basis. So what we do is we, we host the adoption program and we adopt out roads, shorelines, trails, parks, uh, and islands. And now we've just recently started an adopt a hero program. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of veterans are buried in cemeteries that are not well maintained. 
uh, and that's just not the honor that they deserve. So if you're interested, uh, you can actually adopt a veteran. You'll get a dog tag with his name on it and it says adopt a hero on it. Uh, and you maintain that gravesite. You know, you make sure it stays clean. You be put a wreath on it around Christmas time, a flag during Veterans Day, uh, Memorial Day, and uh, that's a, a very important program that we're starting to launch. Um, the adoption program is huge because it gives families opportunities to go out on their own and do cleanups. So if you're interested in doing an adoption, you reach out to us. All of our contacts on our website, uh, but you also. Uh, we provide you with uh, the grabbers, the buckets, the gloves, safety vests if you're going to be on the side of the road. Uh, we give you all the materials that you need to do an adoption. And then, uh, you know, if you have a sign, you know, we also put signs up. There is a small fee for that. But, uh, you know, this area adopted by uh, the Smith family or the Thompson family and even businesses get involved because, you know, it's good PR for them as well. Uh, yeah, some of the other programs, keepreverdbeautiful.org, correct? Correct. Correct. And then also you can always reach us through the app. I know I push the app very hard, but there's a contact us page on the app where you can reach every individual Keeper of Our Beautiful staff member directly. And I'm sure you can just search Keep Brevard Beautiful on the app store and that'll pop up. Yes. On iOS and Android. Awesome. Or just call us at the office. 321-631-631. 0501. Well, there you go. And you guys have so much going on. And I learned a lot just, just by looking at your website for a few minutes. I didn't realize what, so what is going on with these Brazilian peppers? Yes. Uh, the Brazilian pepper tree is a very invasive species of tree. It started off in South Florida. Unfortunately, has made its way up here into Brevard. Um, it's a very invasive tree. The way it grows, it grows so dense and thick uh, that it actually chokes out all the native vegetation that's around it. Um, uh, we have a contract with Port Canaveral to maintain parts of 528 and Jetty Park. And there's a couple other areas that we service as well. Um, but it, the big thing is, especially where mangroves grow, so shorelines, mangroves are a very important part of our ecosystem. If pepper trees start getting around there, chokes them out, kills them. It can destabilize the, the shoreline. It affects the ecosystem directly because, you know, the roots of a mangrove actually provide shelter for small species of fish and other animals. Um, it's a major part of the ecosystem. So without those, we'd be in a lot of trouble. So Keeper of Our Beautiful uh, has two licensed pepper busters. Uh, they're state certified and they're trained on how to properly use the chemicals that are water safe because um, we do work around the shorelines. And that is their job. They go out five days a week and they remove the pepper trees, they treat it, and uh, they also prevent new growth from happening as well. So it's a nasty little tree. It's very viable for a long time. If you cut a branch off of a pepper tree and throw it on the ground, that branch will become a tree. Uh, oh, no berries, kidding. Exactly. It's like a little alien. Um, the, the red berries that a lot of people think are beautiful, and they really are, um, because they actually call that tree Florida holly. Um, but those little red berries that are burying in, in the fall, um, they can be eaten and digested and passed by a bird and still be viable to become a tree for up to 100 years. It is insane how, how sustainable these trees are, but we're trying to kill them. So uh, in terms of uh, reporting them or, or if an individual sees one, uh, should they take any steps or should they just let you guys know that they saw one? Well, the ones that we do are strictly under contract. So, and really anyone that's driven up and down the I-95 corridor, that's all pepper tree. I mean, it, it's, it's mostly peppers. And I know that the state's working on trying to make, um, you know, some adjustments to, to trim them back, but they're so thick. Uh, it, and it's actually related to poison ivy as well. Uh, one in three people actually have a reaction to it. But um, if you have a pepper tree on your property, the best thing I can recommend is to cut it at the stump. And really the, the truly best way to get rid of it is to rip the entire thing out, the entire root system, because uh, sprouts can come up off the roots, rip the entire thing out, treat the soil around it, and just make sure it doesn't come back because it very well could. A lot of people trim them, but they grow so fast. It's like they were never trimmed within a couple of months. So they're essentially just tree weeds that are spreading way too fast. Absolutely. 
I know a lot of people have talked about just using fire to manage it, uh, but with them being related to poison ivy, they can become irritant if you're in the path of the smoke. That's nuts. Mm -hmm. Well, we've talked about a lot of the stuff that individuals can do to, to help uh, keep Brevard beautiful, to help you guys out. But there's also a lot of kind of larger scale programs that businesses and organizations can help with. Uh, I know you've got something called your litter quitter program, your quote unquote, we noticed program. So when it comes to, you know, again, businesses and organizations within Brevard County and Florida, and even, you know, larger than that, uh, what are some things that at that level people can do to, to get active? So one of the, the first programs that we started launching and it really took off during uh, the pandemic was called the Lagoon Friendly Lawns. You know, after the 2016 fish kill, uh, Keep Our Bar Beautiful was asked to step up and help with uh, managing the, the cleanup of that. So we decided that we need to create a program that would prevent this from happening again. And we all know that fertilizers, you know, they're huge. Everyone wants that beautiful green grass. Um, but, you know, there's other ways to have beautiful lawns without that St. Augustine green. Um, and people fertilize it way more than what they should. So by becoming a legume friendly lawn, you agree you're not going to fertilize. You use native plants. Uh, you use permeable surfaces that, you know, the water can absorb into instead of just wash down the street. Uh, policing your grass clippings, and there's a lot more different levels of certification that come with the program. But if you certify yourself as lagoon friendly, we'll give you a sign. Uh, it'll be up there in whatever level that you've qualified in, it will tell you. Uh, and it, we, it's kind of like peer pressure marketing. You put one up in your yard, your neighbor sees that, he's like, oh, well, I want one too. So he goes, and there's been an FIT study that shows that an entire neighborhood that was certified lagoon friendly had less toxic runoff into lagoon than a regular neighborhood. Um, and, and that's just the science of it. So it is productive. We just need more people on board. I believe right now we have around 300 certified homes countywide. Um, during the pandemic, that really took off because everyone was, you know, working on their yards and, and doing a lot of good things. Uh, litter quitter is one that any kind of restaurant can get into. Um, the number one thing that will qualify you to be a litter quitter is just establish uh, an ask for a straw policy. We've all gone to the restaurants where the waiter will come down and just put, you know, about four or five straws on your table and say thank you and, and bring you your drinks. But if you train your staff to not do that and just make us ask for a straw policy, we provide coasters, table tents that say you didn't get a straw. This is why. So they don't think they're having bad service and, you know, really teach their, your staff to, to pitch this to people and it, it can go from there. Uh, the other certifications for that are using um, biodegradable to-go containers instead of styrofoam. Uh, and there's a lot of different levels to go from that, composting your food waste, um, you know, using LED systems in your, in your lights. Um, and then, you know, like I said, the biodegradable uh, uh, to-go containers. A lot of restaurants go to styrofoam because it's the cheapest thing. But if you join Litter Quitter, you actually become part of a co-op through Cisco and Aardvark to get to go containers and paper or yeah, paper straws cheaper than you would at a regular market. So there's a benefit to the program. I know a couple of the chambers of commerce, they actually list litter quitter restaurants on their website. Um, and it's a, it's a, a growing program that, you know, we've got a lot of really good restaurants, local restaurants involved with. Um, and that's always a good one. Uh, another major program that we're about to start, and I'm, I'm proud to say that we broke ground on our facility last week is we're going to start a membership-based composting program. So it's going to be, it's based in West Melbourne for West Melbourne residents right now, uh, as soon as it opens, um, which will hopefully be in the next month. Uh, but it's subscription-based. You pay $25 a month and you will get a five-gallon bucket that's sealable. You put your food waste into there, put it out on the curb on your pickup day. There's contactless pickup. And our drivers will come by, take your bucket, replace it with a clean bucket, and then take your food waste to the facility, treat it, make it into compost. And then twice a year, you can come and pick up a few bags of compost to use for your gardens. Uh, we'll also be selling the product of locally sourced organic compost at local nurseries as well. And we're trying to encourage a lot of the municipalities to use our compost instead of fertilizer because that create you know reduces a lot of the runoff. Um, on average, every home uh, that composts per person in that home reduces one to two pounds of food 
from going to a landfill per day. So imagine if we had a county of 600,000 people participating, how much waste we could be preventing and actually how much nutrient rich soil we could be producing without the, the fertilizers. So the idea is to have multiple facilities throughout the county in the next five years that will service that direct area surrounding the facility. Uh, the city of West Melbourne was kind enough to give us one uh, or property to build the first one. Waste Management's a partner with us. Um, Ember Air is helping us uh, with a grant to install solar panels for the aeration system. So the facility will be completely green and self-sustained uh, without using any uh, you know uh, electricity from, from power lines or anything like that, just what we collect from the sun. So uh, we're really excited about it. The ribbon cutting is going to be coming up soon. And um, we're real excited about this facility opening up. Right, so you can bring the robot to, to cut the, the ribbon on that. Exactly. Yeah. Just like snip it and everything else. <laughs> <laughs> and I know admittedly, a lot of the stuff that we've been talking about today has been Brevard County or even just Florida centric. But uh, like you said, you're just uh one piece of keep America beautiful. So a lot of what you guys are doing is nationwide. So even if somebody's listening to this in Arizona, somebody's listening to this in Alaska, there are a lot of local programs similar to the stuff that you've been talking about that they can get involved in as well. Yes. Uh, every year, keep Florida, or excuse me, keep America beautiful executive directors um, like myself. Uh, there's about 500 something affiliates nationwide. And we meet every year. And part of what we do is we share our programs with each other. There's actually a segment that Keep America Beautiful hosts called Steal This, where you can put a, a table up and you can talk about all the programs that you're doing. And when another affiliate wants to be part of that, uh, you can give them all the material that they need to start that program in their local area. I know Litter Quitter and Lagoon Friendly Lawn both have been used in other affiliates nationwide. Uh, we're hoping to get composting to grow uh, and then some of our other adoption programs. Um, we're working on a program right now called Adopt a Landmark, uh, where we're actually going to be returning the Cape Canaveral Lighthouse. Uh, it's going to be a beautification project in partnership with the Canaveral Lighthouse Foundation, Keeper of Our Beautiful, and Delaware North uh, to return that lighthouse to as close to histor historically accurate as possible. Um, and when that happens, we're going to offer that program out nationwide as well for other affiliates to be able to adopt out landmarks. Sounds like you guys have a couple things going on. <laughs> Just a little um, bit. We've had a couple years to sit around and think about stuff. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, but in, uh, in terms of stuff that, you know, anybody anywhere can kind of get into one thing I wanted to touch on another one of the crazy things that I learned while reading the keepervardbeautiful.org website was the fact that it makes sense when you think about it for a second, but it's still mind blowing to hear that, what is it? 40% of all litter in America is due to just one item from cigarette butts, correct? Yes, that is a, a major issue. Um, in fact, uh, I was quoted in the Florida Today the other day stating that one of the number one things that we find not only on the beach, but everywhere in Brevard County is cigarette butts. Um, you know, the, the reason that's brought up is because a lot of municipalities um, are considering uh, having non-smoking areas on the beach and just a little smoking area. Same with alcohol. Um, and, you know, right now it's out of the municipality's hands. I think that local communities should have the authority to decide how they want to prevent litter uh, from coming onto their, their beaches and their shorelines uh, because that stuff does break down. That's a contributor to the microplastics and they also leach toxic chemicals into our waterways. So it's, it's a number one problem that we have that and little plastic like Capri Sun straws. Those are the two common things that we find the most. Then it goes down the line to like glass bottles, dirty diapers and what from there. But Cigarette butts are by far one of the worst, most often things that we find countywide. And that's the same with all the other affiliates as well. We, we all have that same problem. So, um, you know, just getting people to, to do the right thing, not throw it out a window, not throw it on the ground. Just, if anything, flick off the, the fire part of it and put it in your pocket until you get around a trash can. I know they make pocket ashtrays that, you know, don't make your, your pocket smell like cigarettes. Um, and, you know, get one of those. Just be proactive in, uh, for your environment because they also take so long to biodegrade. 
uh, it's insane. It's there once you throw it there, it's there for years. And regardless of where you're listening to this from, regardless of what part of the country you live in, uh, you may not be able to help too much with microplastics on the beach, but more than likely you can help with the cigarette butt problem in your area, wherever you are. So if you're looking for something to get into and to keep, when it comes to keep America beautiful, keep Brevard beautiful, I'm sure that that's definitely one of the things that is, is essentially nationwide. Uh, yes. But in terms of the stuff that you guys have going on, just kind of very quickly remind us of some of the, the upcoming stuff you have for those people who've listened to this and have, you know, it was like, oh, I want to get active. I want to get, I want to get into this now. So what are some of the things coming up that you, you would recommend for, for people coming into the volunteer aspect of Keep America and Keep Brevard Beautiful? So one of the first programs I would recommend is join one of our community events. Like I said, Trash Bash will be on August 9th. Uh, reach out to your local municipality here in Brevard County, see if they're a uh, site host, which most of the cities are, and they can tell you where to go, where to sign in and everything. Um, I said August 9th, I meant April 9th, I'm, I'm sorry. So April 9th will be the event. Uh, we have another cleanup on, I believe, uh, February 28th is going to be at Manti Hammock Campground. Uh, we're going to be cleaning up all the vegetation there and collecting that so that we can use it for our compost facility. Um, but we're going to cook hot dogs for the volunteers afterwards. Uh, and then I strongly encourage anyone to join our summer series program. The summer series is in partnership with the Forda today and a lot of huge corporate sponsors here in Brevard County. And what that is, is four cleanups based throughout the summer. Uh, you have to attend all four events, and if you do, um, you'll be in the drawing to win a free kayak. We do raffles at every event, um, and it's a lot of fun. The big thing about this cleanup is they're all water-based. We have a lot of kayak companies that will shut down for the day, bring hundreds of kayaks out for our volunteers. We actually kayak, uh, kayak out around Kiwanis Island, uh, out to the Spoil Islands in Titusville for the second event, uh, Turkey Creek for another event. And then around 528 uh, for the final event. Um, and uh, they're all water-based cleanups. And then there's a huge after party afterwards. It's family friendly. Uh, there's no cost to, to join the, the event. Uh, just come out, join us. We'll feed you. Um, and it's a very good team building thing. If you have a company of employees, a small group of employees, you want to do a team building. Uh, FPL's brought teams out. I know Boeing's brought teams out. Uh, Jay Park. I mean, a lot of people have come out uh, to, to join these events. It's great fun for the family. And we do sign off on um, Bright Future Scholarship Hours for Kids. So um, it's a lot of fun. And those will start in June. Um, and then just check our calendar, download our app. We've always got little pop-up cleanups going out throughout the entire year. Or if you want to do a cleanup, reach out to us. We'll help you provide you with the grabbers, the gloves, the buckets, all the supplies you need. And we'll help you host it, you know. So if it's something you're interested in doing, reach out to us. If you want to adopt an area, make it where you routinely clean it, we can help you out with that as well. Awesome. And hopefully, wherever you're listening to this at, this is just giving you kind of a window into just how active uh, an organization, Keep America Beautiful, really is. So if you've got a chapter near you, we recommend that you get involved. Chances are they've got just as much stuff going on as we do here in Brevard County, Florida. But for the folks here in Brevard County, Florida, you've already mentioned the app, but how else can they reach you guys directly, Brian? Uh, through our email, through our phone number. The phone number again is 321-631-0501. Uh, if you download the app, we've got direct contact links there. Um, if you get on our website, you can reach out to our staff directly uh, or come by the office. We're open uh, Monday through Friday from 8 to 4. Uh, and we're located right there in at, off of Adamson Road in Coco. So if you have questions, you're welcome to just drop by. Our staff will be more than happy to help you out in figuring what kind of programs you want to get involved with, what programs you want to uh, possibly start. We want to work with anyone that wants to make a difference in the community. So uh, we're very proactive. And for the people that aren't in Brevard, um, look at your state affiliate. So like keep Florida beautiful, keep Texas beautiful, keep South Carolina beautiful. There's one just about in every state. Uh, if you reach out to them and their website, they'll have a list of directory of affiliates that are close to you. So nationwide, there's a there's a uh, opportunity to volunteer. Awesome. 
Awesome. Well, let's get active. There's a ton of stuff to do. So let's start doing it. Brian, thank you so much for being the very first guest here on episode one of the Recyclist podcast brought to you by Diamond Scientific, your go-to for biogas analyzers, pumps, and accessories. Make sure to check them out at diamondsci.com. That's diamondsci.com. You can call them at 321-223-7500. Brian, once again, thank you so much for giving up part of your day to hang out with us on the very first episode of this podcast. And good luck with everything you guys have going on. Although I might have to come out and see that robot for myself here in a few weeks. It's pretty neat. I can't (laughs) wait to play with it. And again, thank you so much for having me. Thank you for giving us the platform to get our word out um you know and again if you anyone's ever interested in working with us we want to work with you so reach on out to us all right guys make sure to check them out and hopefully we will see you soon for another episode of the recyclist podcast